Hi, and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations, how to calibrate your gas monitor series. This is going to be the Altair 4XR unit we're going to be going through today. Okay, so I'm going to be starting this up, and then we'll go through what you need to get ready while it's starting. Okay, so this is going to go through a warm-up procedure. We're just going to let that one sit. Uh, in the meantime, you got a, a 0 0.25 liter per minute regulator. Uh, it's a C10 fitting like this, and it's a fixed flow on-off. What we're going to do is we're going to take the calibration adapter you got with the monitor, and while this is starting up, going through sensor discovery, we're going to go ahead and attach this here, and we'll get it ready. So I went a little far down on the threads here. You don't have to go that far. Once you're past this first one, you're usually good to go, and sometimes when you get new tubing on there, it can be a real pain getting it off. Uh, if you're having trouble getting the tubing on, you can take like a ballpoint pen uh, cap and something about maybe like this and you can use that inside the tubing to spread it out a little bit that kind of helps when we get new new regulators in okay so this thing here is, uh, it's going through startup mode right here and you can see it's asking us right now it's asking if we want to do an FAS that's for a fresh air setup we're gonna hit no which is this right button here and that tells it that no we just want to go into standard operating mode Okay, so now if, if you wanted to do a full zero, you're, we're going to show you how to do that here. The FAS is more of a, um, it's just a starting point. It's like a low quality zero. So it's generally, I usually find it's not worth doing. So I usually just bypass that. Let's put that down there and let's get the rest of the setup together. So we're going to do an important point here. We're going to open our regulator right here. And we're going to open it all the way and then back it off a little bit. And the reason we're going to do this is because we want this to be like an open path as we screw it into the cylinder. What we don't want to do is trap any of the residual air that has moisture in it inside of our cylinder. So we're going to open that path here and screw this in. And there's a little trick to it. You just slide it. And then once you start hearing gas hissing and you see it ping the gauge, just like that, we're just going to turn that off. And now once that's off, we can just go ahead and keep screwing it in the rest of the way. That helps purge out that moisture there, just so none of it gets into our cylinder. Uh, if it gets into the cylinder, that can be a real problem for the hydrogen sulfide. So speaking of the gas, let's make sure you have the right cylinder. First thing to do is to check your components and make sure that they line up here with, with what we've got for it. So this is the default from MSA. You, if you've changed any of this, then you're going to need different calibration gas. But this is how it comes from the factory. So you have hydrogen sulfide, 20 parts per million carbon monoxide, 60 parts per million, pentane simulant, uh, it's 58% LEL. Yours might say uh, pentane simulant and it might say methane underneath that and, and it would say at 29% LEL or 1.45% by volume. Either way, that's, uh, that's what we're looking for. In this case, those are all the right thing. Oxygen, 15.0% and then a nitrogen balance. And that's the, the standard calibration gas mix for the MSA units. If you scroll to the right, uh, on our cylinders, we have the expiration date here. Always check that expiration date before you go through and do a calibration. That's the most common thing that we'll see with people who have uh, hydrogen sulfide sensors that are off is they didn't check this expiration. So, got that all set once you've confirmed all that. We're going to have our gauge and our cylinder here. Okay, so we've got the unit in normal reading mode. Let's put it into zero. We're going to press and hold this right button here. Two, one. And it'll give you a little haptic feedback response. I'll let you know it's time. And then we're going to say zero cal. Going to press the middle button. Accept it. All right, so now it's going to go into refresh mode. So while this is happening, we want to make sure there's no gas anywhere around it, no calibration adapter that we've got over here. We don't want to have that uh, too close to it. Or if it's just some residual gas. You really just don't want to have it on the unit. Being next to it won't be a big deal. Uh, so while this is going through, though, I want to point out one thing, is that the MSA sensors on the LEL sensor, these XL units, which you can tell is it's like a 4XR or a 5X, etc. Uh, one of the interesting things is that it has two beads instead of the normal uh, sing single bead that it uses for detecting. Uh, so it's got two sets of two beads, actually. And what will happen is when you zero, it swaps between that bead. Uh, going from one to the other one every time you zero. And this helps it deal with like poisons over time and it helps extend the life of the sensor according to MSA. Uh, so one of the interesting things is we're going to do is we're going to do a calibration and a zero on it 
And then we're going to go through, in, in normal practice, we calibrate these twice on the Altair 4XRs. You don't have to, it's not required by the manufacturer, but it's something that we do. Okay, so now it's coming up. It's asking for the same gas that we have on our cylinder here, so that's good. We're going to go ahead and take the tubing, attach it. Easy way is you hook it into the side down here, hook the right side, and then hit the top. They're usually a little stiff at the beginning. We're going to say yes to it, and then press, and we're going to turn on our valve on our cylinder now. So I had to do that last part a little quick, just I didn't want us to run out of time. On the, if, if you wait too long, it'll, it'll end the countdown. We didn't want that to happen. So uh, what we did essentially, we checked, made sure our cal gas values were the same as what's on our cylinder over here. And then we pressed the middle button, attached the cal adapter, and turned on the gas. So if you go too slow at that, sometimes you, you won't do it in time. So you just got to make sure you do it, you know, steady clip on there. All right, so now we're watching the values. Now, this unit hadn't been calibrated for a while. Uh, you can see oxygen's going towards 15. H2S is on its way up to 20. Uh, CO is 52. And this combustible is at 32. So likely in the field, this unit probably saw some sort of inhibitor, either inhibitor or maybe even a poison like a silicon. Uh, and what can happen over time is that it'll decrease the sensitivity. So now the software is going to adjust this 32 up to 58. Uh, if we have enough life left in the sensor. If we don't, it'll fail out. And there, we got a span pass. You can see it adjusted it up to 58 here. Okay, all good. Go ahead and turn the monitor or the gas off there. And then pop the hood here. And it just goes flying off that way. Now we're going to let it go through again. And it's going to fall all the way down. You can see we get this nice big checkbox, and that tells you that it's gone through the calibration successfully. Okay, we're going to let that go down to zero. And now on these units, like I said, we, we calibrate these twice in the shop, uh, once for each of those LEL beads, just in case. That way we know uh, a customer, when they get it, they're not going to get any surprises. Uh, on your end, it, just you as the end user, I don't think you have to, but if you're a repair shop watching this, I would do it twice. Uh, just it's something to keep in mind. And now I'm going to walk through real quick the bump. If you guys want to do a bump test on this unit, it actually has the functionality on board. Uh, so now we're down at zero, and if this wasn't a video that we were doing for you, I'd probably wait a little bit longer, but I'll uh, give it a few, at least a few minutes to air out, but here we go. Hit this button here. Now it asks you, do you want to do a bump test? All you have to do is hit the middle button, take our gas hood, clip it on, and now let's turn our gas on. So I just turned it on. You'll see the values fly up. In a few seconds, it's going to pass the test for us. There you go. Good deal. And you can hear the alarm. You can feel the, hat, the vibrating alarm uh, th through your hands. And you can, if you're watching, you can see the LEDs up here. And you should be checking that every time you're doing a bump test. Okay. There we go. It's still second gas. This is a good thing. See, we've got our LEDs here. We can hear it going off. Uh, I can feel the vibrating alarm right now. So now, to get this to cancel out, press this right button. Everything will reset. And now you're good to go, ready to start your day. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to give us a call. Our number here is 734-956-0539. Uh, again, that's 734-956-0539. Or you can send us an email to our support box, and we'll get back to you pretty quick. It's support at idealcalibrations.com. And again, my name is James Moore. Thanks for watching.